Chung Min? Yeah. Thank you, John. My question is to uh, Minister Lord Triang. You pointed out the five priorities for the new government in, in France uh, in terms of global security is concerned. My question to you, sir, is I agree with all of them. How much money is your president going to give you to make sure that you are able to cover all those five security areas? And in particular, in terms of intelligence, because it, it is perhaps the single most important factor enabling you uh, as a new defense minister of France to make sure that all of these so-called emerging threats are understood. So my question to you, Minister Driang, is how much money will President Hollande give you, and in particular, your intelligence budget? My question to uh, my uh, dear Singaporean minister is, you mentioned the IFC. I think this is perhaps one of Singapore's most important and creative contributions to regional intelligence sharing. Do you have any suggestions, Minister, to make this into a more formalized intelligence network, including like-minded states in Asia? Thank you. Thank you very much. I will collect some questions uh, and let the ministers respond because I think uh, Monsieur Le Drian needs a bit of time to develop the next five-year loi de programmation, as they call it in France. Uh, but uh, we will ask him to re respond uh, once the other questions have come in. Uh, Mr. Kong from Shell. Thank you. My question is to uh, Minister Ng. Uh, Minister, you note that uh, Asia has grown on the back of a growing global economy. Uh, more recently, uh, Asian growth has, of course, underpinned uh, global economic growth, but uh, there are signs that we cannot take uh, this Asian economic growth, even this Asian economic growth, for granted. In the event of an Asian economic downturn, what do you see as the key risks for Asia-Pacific security? Thank you. Josh Rogan. Uh, thank you. This question is for the uh, French Defense Minister. And I hope you won't consider this off topic, but I would like to ask you about uh, a, an issue that affects all of world security, the escalating crisis in Syria. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, since France led the drive for international intervention in Libya, does the new French government support more, more robust international efforts in Syria in light of the fact that the UN Security Council seems unwilling or unable to act? Uh, does the new French government support uh, plans to either arm the Syrian rebels, facilitate safe zones in Syria, for civilians inside Syria, or do more to exert real pressure on President Assad. Thank you. Uh, uh, Aidan Foster Carter. Thank you very much again. <clears throat> I was uh, delighted to hear Monsieur Le Drian make several references to North Korea and its deterrent. Um, at the risk of being slightly provocative and working as I do on North Korea, and since the North Koreans are not here to explain themselves, I have to say that in the many North Korean defenses of their nuclear program, which I've read, which is now part of their constitution, I have to say they sound remarkably goalist. The North Koreans take the view that to be taken seriously as a country in the world, you have to have an independent nuclear power. Um, I speak as one, so I, I would hate to be, I'm a great Francophile. I wish as a citizen that my country, like your country, as not the top powers in the world, if it, were, if it were possible, maybe I speak as a utopian, for us to make some sort of a gesture that we would not have these programs, which in the past have caused a certain amount of atmospheric pollution in the Pacific region, it must be said. And it would be even more tactless to mention the Rainbow Warrior, but seeing the two of you side by side, and some of us who are not diplomats, I think, have to say these things. Is it completely utopian to suppose that if we want the North Koreans and others and the Iranians to stop doing this, that what was supposed to be the other side of the coin of the NPT, that some of us would give it up? Uh, I think I've made my point. Thank you. Yes, I have a question for, for Dr. Coleman. Um, Dr. Coleman, I think your statement about New Zealand's relationship with the United States is probably the, the, the warmest language on that that I've, I've yet heard. Um, and your endorsement of Mr. Panetta's um, comments about rebalancing lead me to a question, because I think that rebalancing will still have more direct impact on, on Australia and its priorities and capabilities uh, than, than it will on New Zealand, partly because of Australia's geographical position closer to the Indian Ocean and to Southeast Asia. So could you explain what you think is the future of the Australia-New Zealand defence relationship in that context, please? Uh, 
Thank you, John. I have uh, uh, two quick questions. One question is uh, going to the Singaporean uh, Ministry of Defense. Uh, you uh, lay out the very uh, comprehensive the uh, points uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the effort of the joint effort of the uh, the legions uh, of the national security. My question is that uh, of the in terms of the protecting the free navigation of the Strait of Malacca. Do you have any idea uh, to uh, make this, this specific coordination on the mine sweeping operation uh, in, in the, uh, Malacca Strait? Uh, because uh, there, there are a lot of concern on the uh, terrorists may uh, spread the mines in the Strait to, to uh, uh, disrupt the uh, free navigation. And the second question is a little bit my previous session. I may uh, lay them different uh, in a long session, but it is a, uh, concerning uh, the uh, pandemic. Uh, according to the report of WTO, the, uh, since 2003, uh, for instance, Indonesia, the more than 157 uh, uh, were killed by the uh, bad flu. And in Vietnam, a, a 60 were killed. And this is a H5N1 virus can be changing from time to time, and this, this is very difficult to uh, protect the uh, human uh, immune uh, by this uh, the virus. So that my point is that uh, uh, this uh, virus can be delivered uh, as by the uh, uh, International Organization of Terrorism. Uh, it's so-called uh, bioterror. So uh, this may be a, uh, in a different domain, which is the healthcare domain, but the kind of a co uh, coordination between healthcare and the national security uh, domain can be cro more corroborated to, uh, to protect, to defend uh, this uh, uh, infection. So this Asia has a, a main uh, source of the, uh, this infection, therefore that we, they have some legitimate needs for more collaboration among the region. Mr. Watanabe. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is developing with uh, Dr. Chen Men Li. They're about a pooling, so I'm very interested in uh, the pooling uh, resources and uh, that the, the Singaporean minister mentioned. And the pooling, uh, the, however, it's uh, not only the intelligence or information, but uh, other things, other things is uh, Probably recent uh, NATO summit in Chicago uh, agreed uh, pooling uh, resources uh, such as uh, some uh, the equipment, uh, the patrolling, or probably the even the precise bombing capability. So I'm very curious about so that's too early for the Asia, it may say. But in the prospect, I'm very curious to hear both sides, I think, a Singaporean minister and the European side too. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make certain that I, before I, uh, oh yes, um, Manish Tiwari. And you, yep. Thank you, John. Uh, my question is to the Defense Minister of Singapore. If I heard you correctly, sir, you alluded to the fact that uh, there is a need for a far more robust institutional response in order to mitigate uh, global risk. I was just wondering uh, whether you were uh, alluding to and talking about the renewal of uh, you know, certain old organizations, for example, the reform of the United Nations Security Council, which has been pending for a long time, or were you really talking in terms of, let's say, transferring security responsibility to some of the new organizations like the G20, which has come into existence? Thank you. Yeah, Dimitri from Financial Times. Uh, thanks, John. My question is for the Minister of Singapore. Um, I think it's fair to say that most of the members of ASEAN, uh, even if quietly, welcome the rebalancing that Secretary Panetta talked about. But can you explain to us how does Singapore and the other ASEAN members, how do they work more closely militarily with the US in a way that doesn't antagonize China and jeopardize their relations with China, which frankly are becoming, in some cases, almost more important than their relations with the US economically? Thank you very much. Uh, oh, Munia, yes. Sorry, thank you, John. Uh, I mean, one of the main theaters of emerging risk to Asia-Pacific security, indeed more that we have discussed at this Shangri-La dialogue, uh, is the South China Sea. 
May I ask the ministers uh, to reflect on a contention that rather than China's activities in the South China Sea, it is the American rebalance uh, through its execution, uh, encouragement or misunderstanding that could threaten Asia-Pacific, particularly Southeast Asian security, as well as could cause dissension within ASEAN. I mean, notice, for example, the Philippines' anger that ASEAN uh, did not come out in, in its support over the Scarborough Shoals uh, issue or standoff. Thank you. I think, uh, I think that's all, which is good because I think each of the ministers will need um, uh, a few minutes to respond and we want, after my summing up, to be able to close at one o'clock since there's still uh, some bilaterals to be uh, held. Uh, let me suggest that we uh, begin with the Defence Minister uh, from uh, New Zealand, then the Defence Minister from France, and then the Defence uh, Minister from Singapore. Uh, in the case of New Zealand, you were specifically asked about uh, your renovated relations in the security sphere with the United States, and I hope you will address that. But I might ask an additional question, which is that uh, up until about uh, five or ten years ago, uh, there was a great deal of uh, discussion on the specific security challenges of small island states, and indeed almost a cottage industry of academic work on this. Uh, as a uh, South Pacific uh, uh, state in an archipelago environment, uh, do you worry that the issue of small state security is now so far down uh, the agenda that that's troubling, and could we anticipate a, a New Zealand initiative to fill any uh, strategic gap that you might perceive in this area? So you first. Thanks very much, John. Well, just to address Mr. Ayson's uh, question, uh, we do welcome the U.S. rebalancing down to our region. We see it as providing significant opportunities for training with a like-minded partner, and it's just really a follow-on from uh, the engagement we've had with the U.S. over the last decade in Afghanistan, uh, signalled also in the Wellington Declaration signed uh, between our Prime Minister and Secretary uh, Clinton in Wellington in 2010. It doesn't affect our relationship with Australia in so much as Australia is a close ally. Uh, we're going to obviously uh, make the most of any opportunities for trilateral uh, exercise uh, engagements. But, you know, as far as the US is concerned, they're a partner and a friend, uh, but we still have a very independent uh, foreign policy. And I think what you're getting at is this re-engineering the days of ANZUS and the answer is no, but we are going to be taking the opportunity uh, to work together and uh, you know, do things of, of mutual benefit. I mean, the US has been involved with us in disaster relief in the Pacific. Uh, we've had Marines in New Zealand exercising with our people last month, and New Zealand forces will be up in the US um, next month. So it's just the ongoing development of a very healthy relationship, and I expect our troops will be increasingly exercising together. In terms of Dr Chipman's uh, comments about Pacific challenges, um, he's right. I think there is a, a danger that some of these issues fall off the agenda. And one of the things that I think is a major challenge in our region is the state of governance in uh, some smaller nations, uh, which can easily uh, spill over potentially um, into conflict. Obviously, we wouldn't want that to happen, but at the end of the day, that's a big concern for both New Zealand and Australia. I mean, you, we uh, see what's happened recently in Vanuatu, uh, instability in Papua New Guinea, although they are having elections, uh, thankfully, this month, and ongoing issues in our relationship with Fiji. But I think there is a wider threat um, regarding the economic situation puts a lot of pressure on smaller nations uh, to take the dollar from uh, any donor that may be available. And that potentially creates, I think, security risks in the region as uh, politically some nations may become compromised. So in answer to Dr Chipman's uh, question, I think it would be uh, good to have an increased Pacific Observer um, presence at this forum in order to make countries across the region, you know, the, the smaller South Pacific uh, nations more aware of the, the challenges, but also the collective goodwill. It's great to see the Tongans here, our very uh, close friends. 
and um, Stephen Smith was talking yesterday about a potential initiative to bring the defence ministers from the five uh, South Pacific countries with a defence force together to talk about issues. At the moment, of course, Fiji would be unable to participate in that, but hopefully they're going to have elections in 2014, uh, free and fair ones, which would enable that. Thank you. Next to Monsieur Le Drian, who has asked a series of wide-ranging and tough questions, not least on the French defence budget. Oui, merci, Monsieur yes, le Président. Thank you, Mr. Je crois qu'on m'a posé I deux questions. La première, c'était de savoir si j'avais de l'argent. Euh, je, vais, je vais répondre. I'm non. Trying, the answer will be no. <laughs> je ne vais pas passer à la seconde tout de suite. I'm not going to switch the je vais essayer de répondre right plus simplement à l'interrogation sur l'argent. Uh, ce que j'ai dit dans mon propos... Said, uh, c'est deux choses. Statement, two things. La première, c'est que, euh, en ce qui concerne uh, la France, point is, is, is uh, France, comme tous les autres pays like uh, concernés par la crise, nous avons crisis, uh, la nécessité d'un redressement des, des comptes publics. Uh, c'est une évidence. It's an, it's Mais nous, nous estimons que euh, le budget de défense the, uh, ne doit pas être la, la variable d'ajustement. Et que s'il y a une, un redressement des comptes publics à établir, if, uh, la défense doit y participer, uh, dans un pays comme dans d'autres, mais à sa place, ni plus like ni moins. Other, et, et ni moins ni neither plus. Neither less, qui, mais si elle doit y participer, ce n'est pas uh, en faisant des, des coupes aveugles sur uh, des programmes. Making en fonction de l'opportunité ou de la facilité, mais en établissant des, des priorités. Et c'est pourquoi euh, mon pays va s'engager dans un nouveau livre blanc to, uh, to, to à partir new, du début du mois de juillet qui devra s'achever à, à la fin de l'année et qui établira uh, les nouveaux risques, nouvelles menaces et capacités à y répondre seul ou avec d'autres. Et c'est cette réflexion qui euh, nous guidera pour uh, euh, la mise en place d'une loi de programmation capacitaire. Uh, to, uh, a, um, Ça, c'est la première chose que je voulais dire en réponse à la première law. question. So Il y a un deuxième aspect. Si euh, j'ai pris des engagements took, concernant l'Asie du Sud-Est, en particulier, sur, euh, et sur euh, l'affirmation uh, de quelques priorités, c'est que dans mon esprit, elles sont déjà dans les priorités futures du livre un propos de circonstance. Et par contre, euh, sur la nécessité de renforcer le, le, le renseignement, qui a été euh, souligné, je crois, par le premier interlocuteur, c'est un, un point de vue que je partage. Sur, sur la Syrie, le, le président de la République française n'a pas exclu l'intervention il a même dit qu'une intervention militaire n'est pas à exclure, sous réserve qu'elle soit mandatée par le Conseil de sécurité. Je crois que sur ce point, euh, il y a euh, une très proche réflexion de Léon Panetta sans préjuger de quel type d'intervention militaire, puisqu'il peut y avoir une palette d'interventions, mais il faut qu'elle soit mandatée par euh, le Conseil de sécurité. Le, les discussions qui ont eu lieu avant-hier euh, à Paris entre euh, M. Poutine et, et le président Hollande euh, ne permettent pas de penser que le veto think, uh, russe sera levé demain matin. Mais, But je pense que les, les Russes doivent se rendre compte aussi que l'avenir en, en Syrie ne pourra pas se faire avec Bassar et qu'il faudra qu'ils l'intègrent par nécessité. Et cette situation pourra peut-être les amener à bouger. Mais toute intervention militaire, en tout cas engageant euh, mon pays, ne pourra se faire que sur le mandat du Conseil de sécurité. D'ici là, il faut monter les pressions, monter les sanctions, mobiliser l'opinion publique, et isoler le plus possible Bassar, et faire comprendre à ceux qui le soutiennent encore que leur propre intérêt, je pense en particulier à la Russie, n'est pas là.
Minister of Defence of Singapore. Thank you, John. Um, I'd like to answer the questions in turn. Uh, Mr. Lee asked about the uh, information fusion center. First, let me thank you for your positive comments. Uh, Mr. Lee asked whether it was, uh, would be more effective as a formalized institution. Uh, it might be, but um, we, we have been repeatedly struck uh, by how, how useful it has been in the positive responses when we uh, approached it initially from an informalized way, in the sense that uh, it was an open-ended invitation and people could put in information that they use. Uh, in some senses, it's uh, reflected to this new collective response to uh, globalized views. Uh, someone remarked that if you sort of put all the information that was drawn from, say, Twitter, you could actually track real-time instances as happening. In other words, if you could just uh, see or put together the information, then that's uh, what we're doing. Uh, we'll continue to facilitate it. We think that uh, there's great capacity for commercial shipping information to be fed into this information fusion center and for the common maritime uh, picture and we'll continue to work with partners. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, similar questions were asked by Mr. Tiwari about uh, my comments on institutions. And I was making just an observation that uh, many of the institutions, uh, mechanisms that we now have, uh, some were post-World War II, Cold War constructs and that uh, if we are to be effective, we may have to refresh and update institutions or mechanisms that reflect uh, both the resources and ability for different nation states or countries, uh, different economic dependencies and strategic uh, relationships. Um, Mr. Kong asked if uh, Asian growth uh, uh, could be taken for granted there. Obvious answer is no, there is an inter interdependency on the US and the EU, but uh, I think one, 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 one statistic will, 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 may reflect the uh, importance of intra-Asian uh, dependency. Uh, China as a trading partner is already, uh, as I said, the leading trading partner for ASEAN, Korea, Japan, and Australia. Uh, it is accounts for at least either one quarter or one fifth of trading volumes and more than the US and EU combined for these countries. So uh, we, we speak about concern and, and even fear of a, a Chinese economy uh, growing too fast. Uh, I, perhaps we may be, we have to be careful what we wish for sometimes and indeed uh, a Chinese engine that stalls, economic engine that stalls, may bring on problems. And Mr. Kong asks, what are the key risks? In my mind, the key risk is uh, uh, a reduction in commitment to maintain the global system and a reversion to forms of trade protectionism, regionalism, and so on and so forth. Mr. Maida asks about the Straits of Malacca, whether we had mind sweeping um, concerns. Uh, uh, and along the same lines of uh, informal and formalized uh, uh, mechanisms, uh, I think the Shangri-La Dialogue is an excellent example of an informal uh, uh, forum that's very effective. And, and I say that because it was in the Shangri-La Dialogue uh, that the uh, ministers evolved a number of uh, principles that governed the Straits of Malacca. And they were fairly, if you think about it, uh, no-brainer principles that uh, you wouldn't, uh, you would, uh, the sovereignty of the littoral states uh, would be preserved, uh, that the user states could contribute. Uh, and uh, because of this, uh, the maritime patrols uh, were evolved. For minesweeping, obviously, uh, if we follow those principles, uh, for the Straits of Singapore, uh, uh, Republic of Singapore Navy is investing in capabilities in terms of uh, mine clearance and so on and so forth. But if indeed there was a, a concern uh, I'm confident that based on this uh, quadrilateral partnership with littoral states that we would evolve uh, responses, including the user states to contribute resources. Uh, Mr. Watanabe asked if we had uh, moved from uh, sharing of resources and information to attack capability. Uh, I can categorically state that we have not spoken to any of the ADMM members and PLUS partners on coordinated attack potential. Uh, but 
there may be non-traditional threats uh, that we, have, we could evolve response in, in responses to, for example, in drug and human trafficking. And the Proliferation Security Initiative is one example where it's, uh, it is a kinetic response. Uh, in other words, we are given the mandate to board ships uh, that we think, uh, the PSI partners, to board ships that we think are uh, uh, moving uh, component parts for weapons of mass destruction. So that will be the closest example in terms of uh, a kinetic response. Um, Mr. Sevastopol asks if the, uh, what ADMM's response to uh, the US rebalancing and how we would uh, manage that relationship with China. I think we've all gone on public to state that the ASEAN nations, and indeed no nation, uh, wants to be in a position to choose sides. And indeed we do not. I mean, uh, ADMM is central but neutral. And the way we have approached it, again, is from a practical um, angle. And we believe that if we uh, continue to have the ADMM plus uh, uh, inclusive regional security architecture that focuses in parallel at the same time to enhance mutual understanding and, and through practical cooperation. And this is the idea behind next year's uh, Brunei's uh, idea of chairing the SIG-18 nation combined HADR military mission exercise. We believe that uh, if troops uh, come together, you reduce the risk of uh, miscalculation, misunderstanding. Uh, finally, the question by Mr. Muneo on the South China Sea. The South China Sea is a very complex issue, as, as all of us know, and uh, the ASEAN uh, response is that uh, uh, we should move on the implementation guidelines of the Declaration of Conduct, which was agreed on in 2002, and then recently agreed with China. With China. And we're moving on to the Code of Conduct. Uh, John, you made a point that uh, the Code of Conduct uh, isn't a suitable mechanism to resolve jurisdictional disputes, and you're absolutely correct, it isn't. Uh, it has to be a parallel uh, uh, mechanism. Uh, the code of conduct, though, if you like to use your words, uh, provides a set of uh, rules on the road to de-escalate, to prevent escalation based on your actions. Uh, but uh, dispute mechanisms uh, will, are, are there, whether it's through ICJ or finally through ITLOS, uh, if, if jurisdiction is to resolve. Uh, so they exist. And I think that uh, our common principles in terms of uh, resolution to diplomatic means and to de-escalate current situation is, is well, what we're intending to do. Uh, in Cambodia recently, uh, I had an opportunity to both speak with General Liang Kuan Lie and uh, Secretary Gasmin and uh, from the talks, I mean, it, uh, there is a commitment to de-escalate the current the situation in Scarborough Shoal and we, we urge them on that path. Thank you very much. Mr. Minister, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me just say a few words in closing and provide two sets of thanks. First, I think at this Shangri-La Dialogue, we've had strategic analysis, policy initiatives and announcements, and also real defense cooperation at this summit. I want to thank the three ministers here uh, for their contribution in all three dimensions of this activity, the provision of strategic analysis, some policy announcements, and demonstration of real defense cooperation, as I want to thank all the ministers and all the governments who have contributed so positively uh, to the success of this dialogue. Next, I want very warmly to thank the government of Singapore, the Minister of Defense of Singapore, Ministers of State, Permanent Secretary, the staff in particular, policy staff of uh, the Ministry of Defense for their extraordinary and essential support to this Shangri-La Dialogue and to the process uh, that accompanies it. And I think it is also uh, very important that we all recognize uh, the tremendous professionalism, efficiency, and exceptional courtesy of the Singapore Armed Forces and the Singapore Police Forces that have provided the essential but discreet security that has permitted 
such an informal meeting of very important people uh, to take place. The officers in attendance to all the ministers uh, of defense who have guided them so seamlessly through uh, the halls and rooms of this vast hotel to bring them to their bilateral, trilateral, and other meetings uh, on time, calmly and able to concentrate on uh, the work at hand. And again, to thank uh, the president and the staff of the Astana uh, for their uh, extraordinary uh, dinner. And of course, we will all uh, continue to uh, study uh, the special techniques uh, that the government of Singapore has brought to bear to accelerating the 28-day cycle of the full moon uh, in order to ensure uh, that all live under its uh, warm light uh, when defense ministers uh, gather here. As I announce, they all will again at the Shangri-La Dialogue between the 31st of May and the 2nd of June, 2013. Bon chance, bon voyage, et merci. If I, if I can just on behalf of the uh, uh, SAF and Singapore government also thank uh, IISS and Dr. John Chipman for so ably organizing each year the Shangri-La Dialogue. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs>